All right. Good morning, ladies. <laughs> You're welcome. I just wanted you to feel, you know. And our first thing that we're going to talk about is Miss Amy Bell yeah. is 21 today. Woo! Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Amy. All right, so today we're talking about the letter to the Colossians. A little bit of background of the um, church in Colossae is Epaphras was the, I guess, the church um, planner and pastor, and he had went to go visit Paul in Rome while he was in prison. So Paul, he was in prison, as we know, because he continued to speak the gospel of Jesus, and he, he didn't ever go to Colossia, Colossae, but Epaphras heard the gospel through him, and so really it was kind of a fruit of the ministry that Paul had. And Epaphras went to visit him and just tell him of um, about how the church was going and also to talk to him about some false, false teachings that um, was endangering the dependency that the Colossians had on Jesus. And really, they were kind of the same that um, he had talked to the Romans about, that he had written the letter to them about, and also really not much different than the false teachings of today, if you think about it. Um, we'll look at verse 1 and 3, and it says, We also, we always thank God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all saints. And I like how Paul starts it off. You know, he doesn't know any of the people that he is writing this letter to. So he's like building them up. He's encouraging them and saying, I see the fruit of, um, of your labor in Christ. I see how you're loving people. I've been told. So continue doing what you're doing. Good job. Verse 9 and 12, um, it says, We keep asking God that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of God. We pray that you may be strengthened with all the power that comes from his glorious might, for you to have all kinds of patience and steadfastness. It's only after encouraging and like I said, building them up, that he continues to say, we pray that you grow into the fullness of all that God has for you and that he has had planned since before the beginning of time. And at this point, then he proceeds to tell them how to do that. So, you know, the same goes for us. It's like God has plans for us that we know nothing about. And so, you know, we're, we're all to... Um, have the fullness of that. And so let's see how we go about that. Um, and I'm paraphrasing verses 13 to 21. It says, God has delivered us from the darkness and transformed us into the kingdom of his son in whom we have redemption for the fullness of sins. And it's only through the blood of Jesus that we are able to have what God has intended for us and nothing else. It's not anything that we've done. We can't do that. It's in his image. He is, in, he is the image of the invisible God, Jesus is, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created in heaven and in earth, on earth. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, which is the church. He's the firstborn from the dead, that in everything we, that he might be supreme. For the fullness of God was pleased to dwell in Jesus and through his fullness, he reconciled to himself all things, making peace by the blood of his cross. He reconciled us, those that put their trust in him. He reconciled us to God through his cross. He has now reconciled you and his body of flesh by the death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him, if indeed you continue in the faith stable and steadfast, not moving from the hope of the gospel 
that you heard. And so here, the last part of it, it says, if we don't move from the hope of the gospel. So that means if we don't take our hope from God and put it into ourself. And so that's the dependency part. We have to continue to be dependent on Jesus and the work that he has done for us. And I'm thankful to know that Jesus doesn't need me to do anything because honestly, I have to double knot my shoes because I can't keep them tied. So if I can't do that, then I dang sure can't, you know, give anything to be reconciled to God. So basically, we just have to grasp that before we are able to grow in Jesus. If we can't grasp the fact that we can't do anything, then we're going to continue striving for something that we can't ever obtain. 2-2 reads, my purpose, and this is Paul talking, my purpose is that their hearts, and I'm going to read it like he's talking to us. My purpose is that the hearts of the women of Titus are joined together in love, and they may be encouraged. May the women have all the riches of the full assurance of understanding, leading to a true knowledge of the mystery of God, which is Jesus. And it's in him that all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden. I am telling you, ladies, this so that no one will deliver you, that no one will deceive you with persuasive sounding arguments. The verse that says, in him, in Jesus, all the wisdom, all, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden. Whenever I read that, I just visualize piles and piles of books and notes and pictures and boxes full of treasures. And we are to go and dig that up. We're to look and see. And the treasures is the word. So we're to look and dig through theirs. And that's the mystery. That's the, the truth about Jesus. And those things is what we are to hang on to. And so just the, imagine like your friend calling you up and just being all excited You know, I was planting flowers in my garden today, and whenever I was digging it up, I found this ring, you know, this diamond ring, and it was perfect. There wasn't any scratches on it, and it was the right size even. I hollered and screamed and then put it back in the ground and continued on. Well, you would think, what is your problem? And tell me where the diamond ring is because I'm going to go get it, you know. But that's what we do so many times with the word. Whenever we find treasures, whenever we find um Whenever we receive revelation from Holy Spirit, we let it go as quick as we receive it. You know, when we leave on Sundays or when we leave tonight or whenever we go to work after we've read the Bible, as soon as we lay it down, we don't think about it anymore. And unfortunately for us, you know, it's like if we can't hang on to that, then we're going to be what Paul said, um, deceived with persuasive sounding arguments, you know? So we have to hang on to the treasures that God has given us. God has given us authority to not only go get, to find, he he sends Holy Spirit to teach us. That's how we're taught. We're taught by the Holy Spirit out of revelation from him. So we keep it and then we implement his word. We implement it in our lives. We do not have to wait for heaven. That's the thing. It's like so many times that we're like, okay, I received Jesus, what he's done for me, and now come Jesus, come. I love that song, but we have to get away from, all right, Jesus, I'm ready for you to come. We have work here on this earth to do, and we only know that through the word. The only way that we're going to know is find the mysteries to, you know, search that out search his wisdom out. So we don't have to wait until heaven to benefit from the redemption that Jesus died to give us. God's desire is for us to benefit as soon as we find the treasure, as soon as he reveals it to us. One thing Paul was telling the Colossians was don't be ignorant of um, the gospel. When we're ignorant and we do not read and learn on our own, then we're really easily deceived. Um, And I will say this, that anyone that you hear the word of God from, anyone that, you know, shares with you, and it doesn't matter how insignificant they are, you know, in our eyes, they're a three-year-old 
or someone that has all these initials after their names, there's gonna, they're going to be at times, they're going to be incorrect. And the reason is because we're human beings, and these words are from the Holy Spirit. So we're not intelligent enough to know exactly what it means. And as we grow and mature, that's exactly what we do. We grow and mature. So we have to know for ourselves. And whenever something in our spirit goes, hmm, I don't know about that, then that's when we go and we look it up. We don't take people at their word. And that may sound bad, but we just don't. You know, we can't do that. We can't allow our salvation to be in someone else's hands. Not that we can't learn from everybody, because I think we should. Um, so we must learn and read and receive the mysteries of Jesus. Chapter 2, 6 through 12 says, Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving, see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to the human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. In him also you were circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him, through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. Verse 16 says, Therefore do not let anyone pass judgment on you in matters of food or drink or respect of a festival or new moon or Shabbat. These are the foreshadowing of things to come. But the reality, the reality is Jesus. Let no one disqualify you by insisting on false humility and worship of angels, going into detail about what he has seen puffed up without cause by his fleshly mind. He is not holding fast to the head, which is Jesus. So basically is what he's saying is um, go and learn and read and know what it says. And don't let someone disqualify you because as soon as you or listening to only what other people that should be smarter than you, you know, or has been in the word longer, or whatever it is. And you and you loosen up what you hold, you've held fast to. Well, now you're letting what that person says dictate if you're qualified or not. And you know, we can't follow enough rules to, um, or following the rules does not qualify us. And not following the rules doesn't disqualify us. Well, Jesus is the only one that can qualify us. So we have to just continue to stick with that. We have to know that without Jesus, we're disqualified. With Jesus, we are qualified. And when we accept the truth, we'll stop fighting to be better. We'll stop fighting to do the right things, you know, the quote-unquote right things. Coming to church enough, which I'm all about church, and I believe we should come to church. It says that. But coming to church every Sunday isn't going to qualify you to go to heaven. Um, you know, we we do the right things at times to impress God. Or, and maybe not just in us, in it, maybe it's subconscious, but it's like if I do the right things, then it'll get me to have that closeness with God. And that doesn't work either, unfortunately. When we stop struggling to be perfect, though, um, then we're able to have a relationship with God. Whenever we can just breathe and go, you know what? It is because of Jesus that I have that I have salvation and that I've been redeemed. It's because of that. It's nothing that I can do. And then it's just like we just lay it all down, you know? And um, then we can have that true relationship the way that he made us and let him sort out all the things that are in us that are of earthly world, you know, that are in us that shouldn't be. Several months back, um, I was, I say, talking, and it mostly probably was complaining about, okay, you've told me this, and I've allowed you to lead me, you know, through Holy Spirit to do what it is that I feel like you've had, you know, asked me to do. I've been obedient and all that, and this still hasn't happened. So, what the heck? 
And after I stopped talking, you know, he just is so um, sweet. He said, just be my daughter. And I just started crying. I was like, wow, so I don't even know what that means. You know, my earthly father, he didn't ever, um, we weren't a we didn't ever have that benefit of just being his kid. So I was just, honestly, I'm like, I don't even know what that means. You know, how do you just be? And um, the, one of the things that he showed me is that my real question wasn't, you know, did I hear you right? Is there something that I've missed hearing? And because really that's what I was, I thought I was asking, but um, it was more so the real question was um, that I was asking him, what am I not doing right? What am I, you know, what am I not, how am I not being good enough? And in that instance, I went back to being in works and I don't believe in works. I don't believe that's how it goes, but um you know, so it's like whenever we don't hold fast to who we are in Christ, we kind of lose that part. And a lot of times if we don't know how, how to do it, you know, I didn't know how. So he shows us. It's, it's like he wants that relationship. So um, we don't stop at knowing that the only way is through God's grace. We don't stop at learning the word. God wants us to know that everything we need is in Jesus and that day I needed to, you know, hear that. And so we have to have the relationship. And I, I believe that we have to know them in those orders. You know, it's like we can't go past step one and knowing it's all Jesus. And if we do, then it's not going to happen. Anyways, chapter 3, 1. So we have a relationship with Jesus. We have a relationship with God. Um, it says, therefore, if you have been raised up with Jesus, seeking Keep seeking the things above, where Jesus is, sitting at the right hand of God. Focus your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden in Jesus, with Jesus in God. Chapter 3, 5, 8, and 10 says, Put to death what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire and covetousness, which is idolatry. You must put away anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with practices, with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. That last part, um, that it's being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. I think for me, that's where the relationship part came in. It was like until you truly can see the, the, and, and have the knowledge of what your, the image of your creator looks like, you know, between Jesus and God, whenever they, when Jesus sat with God and cried out to him and, um, really relied on him you know it's, it wasn't until then that that God started walking me really through that um that I think it takes you to a whole nother level of just peace and you know serenity with him the most important thing well not maybe the most important thing but one of the important things that we must remind ourselves is that we cannot do it by our own power it's not by us um Yes, we have to be active in the process, but it's the power of the Holy Spirit that we are convicted and our behavior are transformed into the image of the Creator. And so don't allow, like, you know, me, no, I, I couldn't allow the enemy to tell me, well, you've done all these things, which I did, and I, God asked me, you know, to do them because I had to work through some stuff. But then you don't, let you don't allow the enemy to say well so there must be something wrong you know with you because look at you know you you've you've been obedient well no it's just not the time yet you know and that's one of my 
big downfalls is that I don't understand God's timing, nor do I like it <laughs> most of the time. It's like you take too long, God. Um, verse 12 says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself in tender compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. If anyone has a grievance against another, just as the Lord pardoned you, so also you must pardon others. Verse 14 and 16, or through 16, says, But of, above all these things put on love, which is the bond of perfect harmony. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. To this peace you were surely called in one body, also be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another with all wisdom and psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So when we put our dependency in Jesus and we learn by reading, listening to trustworthy people, and receiving what Holy Spirit is teaching us about the mysteries of Jesus, when we stand on the truth that Jesus is our qualifier, we can let our guard down with God and have the relationship that he has intended. At this point, we can allow the work to truly begin where we take off the old self and stand naked and unashamed of and allow God to clothe us with the new self, which is the image of our creator. We allow him to tell us things that we might not want to hear, and we can accept it for knowing that he is a loving and caring father. So I think that that's that last part, the, you know, taking the old earthly junky body, you know, suit off and putting on the new self. That is, that's our whole, that's our whole purpose as a believer, a follower of Jesus to show the world, you know, to show the difference. And I can tell you, so I haven't been a friend of Jesus for, for really very long. Um, what is this, 24 like nine years, eight years, eight and a half years. And so I've worked with the same people, pre-Jesus and after Jesus. And I don't remember this, but I, I do not believe that the lady's lying. She told me one day, she goes, and before I was a driver, I would load trucks. And so it's how it works is basically there's a conveyor belt and all these boxes are coming down the belt and you have four trucks you have to load. And so she's in front of me and I'm behind her. And well, they have like little labels. I'm sure you've seen them, you know, and it has the name of the truck. So you're supposed to get your box for all those trucks before it gets to me. She never could do that very well. And it would drive me crazy because now I have to sort all of her stuff and I have to put her stuff down and I'm trying to get all my stuff. And she goes, do you remember that time that you threw that box of bleach at me? And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, nope. <laughs> But I probably did. I mean, I had an anger problem. And I'm like, you're making my job so much harder because you can't do yours, you know. So I probably did. I probably threw it at her. But I would never do that now, you know. And that is only through God, you know, his work in me. I did not do that. So I guess that's my thing. It's like it's acceptable, I guess, to throw bleach at people before you know Jesus. It's not acceptable <laughs> after you know Jesus to throw bleach at people. Or, you know, whenever you're driving and you have the cute little Harvest Connection sticker, it's not acceptable to throw hands because someone cuts you off. You know, it's like we need to be image bearers of Christ. I have listened to a pastor once that said they have never nor will they ever have church stickers. And he said, I have seen y'all drive. And I don't want, you know, we love God and this at the same time. That doesn't, you know, match. 
Um, and it's not that pre-Jesus post, you know, it's not even that. Because the other day, I was frustrated. Our trucks get very dirty. We go down all these dirt roads. In Amarillo, you know, you don't, but I deliver in Groover. And so, I mean, there's like thick dirt. And whenever I went to drop off the truck after work, this guy comes in there because he's getting some boxes out. And this guy's pretty new. And he's whiny. But when he gets in the truck and I pop the door, he's like, I can't breathe. All this dirt. I was not having a good day. This was my first pop out of my mouth. Suck it up. I said, you've been in here two minutes. <laughs> it's like, you've been in here two minutes. And we work in this every day. You know? And I was like, I know, God, I know. And I went upstairs, used the restroom, I'm clocking out. And I'm like, okay, I have to go apologize to him. You don't tell someone, suck it up. You know, even though he probably just needed to suck it up. You know, it's like, it's part of your job. But I apologized. And he's like, for what? And I'm like, for saying that. He's like, oh, don't worry about it. Well, you know, it's like we have to just let God do what God wants to do and take the old self off and put on the new self. And it is a process. It's not overnight, you know, and I'm thankful that um, God doesn't expect it to be overnight. So the last part of the um, chapter, or, or the last part of the book, 3, 22 and 24, it says, obey your earthly masters in everything you do. And this is talking about earthly masters, but I really think that this is just a way that we need to be. Um, but this is specifically talking about earthly masters, so like your boss, whatever. Um, it says, obey your earthly masters in everything and do it not only when their eyes are on you and to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with your all your heart as working for the Lord not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Um, chapter 4, 5, and 6, it says, Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders, like me telling that guy to suck it up. Um, make the most of every opportunity. So when you do speak wrong go back you know and let's apologize let the conversation be always full of grace seasoned with salt so that you may know how to answer everyone so I think like I said that very last part the whole making you know taking the old off putting the new on I think that that's an everyday growing that we should you know really just wake up in the morning and say okay God you know I want to be new. I want to be renewed. I want to be closer to your image than I was yesterday. And then just know that you will get tested and there will be a lot of dirt in your truck one day and you'll tell someone to suck it up and you'll have to go apologize. That way, the next time that he comes in there and whines about it, you'll be like, yep, you know, it is. It's rough breathing in all that dirt. Have a great day. And that's all you, you know. So, anyways, there are questions on your table. And the last one, maybe, I think it is, it's talking about um, looking up some verses. And if I think if everyone doesn't have a Bible that has that in the back where you can look up words, then I'm sure other people can share. So anyways, thank you, ladies. <laughs>